Hi, this is Dalton with GeoMarvel, and today we're going to be reviewing how to get started with Survey123 Connect. First, looking at the Esri resource page where you can find the download if you don't have Survey123 Connect in your computer. So right at the bottom here, you'll see the Survey123 Connect desktop app. We already have it downloaded, so this is the desktop app view, and we're gonna go ahead and click New Survey. We'll give our survey a name, in this case, UFO Sightings, and we're gonna create it from the advanced template. We'll create survey. So Survey123 Connect uses Microsoft Excel and XLS form standard for the underlying technology. And you can see out of the box, this has two questions, a text and a multiple choice. And clicking the Excel form spreadsheet button will open the Excel form. Updating will update the survey with the latest information. And files will take you to the local files for this survey, which in this case includes a media folder, which can house things like images and other information. And it has the Microsoft Excel form named UFO sightings in our case. Now looking at this Excel form, there are a few different pages to be aware of. So here is where we have our input types question titles, and question labels. This is where we'll populate the baseline content for our survey. And along the bottom here, we have a choices tab. This is where you can use these essentially domains for drop-down choices or button choices. And we have our settings. We have our version, which will tell us the template version and revision date of the survey. The question types, these will be important where this is the syntax that we'll use to determine what types of questions we will be using in our survey form. There's anything from text and integer to geopoint to capture a point on a map, to groups, to calculations and emails, for example. And there are also appearances. So we have full control over the appearance type of each of our survey questions. And you can see here, certain appearances apply to certain question types. For example, the minimal view applies to select one, select multiple, barcode, and begin repeat, whereas the hide input only applies to a geo point. And in the field types page, you can see the specific Esri field types that may be used. And we have a reference section that outlines some of the formula operators, the HTML formatting, some regular expressions, and mathematical functions that can be used within this survey. And we also at the end here have a list of reserved words. These are words where if you attempt to use them in let's say a header, the survey itself will prompt you with an error saying this is a reserved word. Now let's go ahead and change some of these settings here for our baseline survey and start using Survey123 Connect. So first, let's go ahead and check out our question types page. And we're going to use a geopoint question for our first input in the survey. And let's go ahead and give that question a title. Let's say location spotted. And I'm purposely going to give these titles um, a space in the name just so you can see how Server123 Connect handles it and know how to handle a common error when it comes up. And then we'll give that GeoPoint a label and we'll move on to our second question. And we're going to choose a date time field type. And we'll also give this a name. We'll go date spotted and we'll give that a label. And our third question type, let's make that a text input. The field name of shape of UFO and a little description of what the purpose of this input is. And our next question type will be an integer. And this is where we'll capture the duration of time in seconds that the UFO was spotted. And let's add another text field for additional comments. And now let's download our survey as an Excel form again, and we'll head back to the files associated with the survey when Survey123 Connect. We can remove our previous Excel file version and go ahead and drop our new download, updating it to match the naming convention of the original file. And when doing so, you'll notice that Survey123 automatically updates. And here we're seeing an important error this is the error I was pointing out that says basically you have a space in your title and that is not allowed based on these surveys formatting. So let's head back to our survey and let's add an underscore instead of a space to each one of these. 
This is an important distinction as it's a common error that users encounter in Servo123 Connect. Okay, so with our update, let's go ahead and download the latest version of this Excel form and delete our old version and go ahead and replace the new version. And again, update that naming convention to match the original, which you will then see Servo123 pick up and refresh the view. So now you can see our question types, the geo point, the date time, the two text inputs, and the integer input. So when we hit publish, we can hit options and see a series of options there, which all look good. So let's hit publish survey. And this is creating our feature service. It's enabling editor tracking, which we'll see in a minute, and creating that web map within ArcGIS Online that we're connected to. So jumping over to ArcGIS Online, let's take a look for the folder that Survey123 created for our survey and feature layer. So survey UFO sightings, here's a web map, our survey form, and our feature layer. Let's take a look at the feature layer fields and make sure they reflect what we're expecting. So looking at the data tab and the fields view, you can see we've got that global ID and it added those creator, creation date, editor, editor date fields. Now I've already created a UFO sightings scene here. So let's go ahead and add this feature layer to our scene so we can make UFO observations and see them come in in a 3D view. Now, opening up the form item, one of our options will include opening this survey in browser. So this is essentially just going to let us gather data and populate our survey feature layer using the question types that we've designed. So we've got our geo point, we'll add our date and our time, we'll type in the shape of UFO spotted, We'll add an integer for the length of the sighting in seconds and additional comments. And that survey was submitted, so let's go refresh our scene. And there you can see our survey point has populated on the map. Now that's a, an out of the box symbology, so let's go ahead to the visualization tab of this survey feature layer. And let's give it something that better suits a UFO sighting. So we'll go to symbology and click Options, Symbols, and way at the bottom, we'll choose a custom image. Now I've already preloaded a PNG image into our ArcGIS Online account that I can use as this image. So I'll drop the URL, add the image, and we'll make that a little larger for visibility. And let's save that symbology. And looking back at our scene, let's refresh. And there we have our updated symbology. So let's jump back to our content and submit a few more survey records using our newly created survey. So we've submitted a few more records. Let's refresh our scene and take a look at our end product. So today's video has outlined how to get started with Survey123 Connect. As you can see, the end products are very similar to your typical Survey123 interface, but allows for some additional functionality as you can see from the question type options. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll dive in and take a look at more advanced concepts within Survey123 Connect to continue to build upon this survey. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and leave comments for additional videos that you'd love to see on our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.